<laughs> hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Is It Called Wine Time with Pete and Felix. Um, exciting today. Chateau de Bonazo. Chateau de Bonazo. Now this is a producer that uh, I'd never heard of before, actually. Yeah, um, I have, because I spent a lot of time on Instagram and reading about hard to get wines. Yeah. Because it's, it's my thing and I put too much effort into it. A lot um, of time. A lot of time. But it pays off in the industry, which is good because you, <laughs> you know um, about things when they arrive. And interestingly uh, as well, like you, not only hard to find wines, but you also spend a lot of time looking at Loire Shannon. Yeah, I have a, a weakness for Loire Shannon. It's my thing. If there was a, a, a what do I love section of the shop, it would be just Loire Shannon's. So I think you, we decided the other day that if you were a grape, you would be Shannon Blanc. I mean, yeah, it fits so much. Yeah. I, I'm rich Sorry. and remind everyone of honey. Um, <laughs> what can I say? That's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, shout out to Bonazzo. Um, founded in the 19th century. Yeah, it's a really, really old estate. Um, has been in the same family since then. Uh, in the 80s, the grapes and vineyards were basically rented out to other people to produce wines. And it was only up until 2012, I believe, that the family decided to resurrect, uh, for lack of a better term, the, the brand, brand. Yeah. the winery. Yeah. Um, timely, because Guillaume, who's the winemaker... She is part of the family, but was working with Mark Angeli at the time, who happens to produce some of my favorite Shannons. Uh, and some incredible wines. I mean, like wines that yeah. are considered to be some of the best Anjou Blanc uh, yeah. coming over the Loire. So. I mean, 100 gram residual sugar rosé. Mm. Yeah. Sign me up. Please. Breakfast juice. <laughs> um, but she also she also worked with... Uh, Stefan Bernardo, Bernardo yeah. who... Is also a Grail Shannon of mine. It's funny how this is working out because we, we got Mark on Jelly. Then we got wines from Stefan Bernardo. And now we're getting wines from Shadow de Bonazzo. So I'm very happy. <laughs> um, yeah, this is definitely my thing. Uh, yeah, we've never had a chance to try these wines. It's the first time they've been imported into the country. Frumas is also a new label from them, which is working with the Young Vine material. Uh, the... But I guess it's the lineage between you know, Marco and Jelly and those wines and then kind of an homage to them. So there's a unicorn that's carried on, but it's a little bit more regal and kind of has, I guess, you know, some of the... Does, is it wearing a crown? No, but it's, it is definitely a coat of arms. Like, you're right yeah. in saying that. Uh, but either way, Shannon. So... Yeah, um, and yeah, we should we also go. point out, I mean, obviously, uh, for those who don't know, Mark Angeli and uh, Stefan Bernardo are uh, natural producers. Yes. Um, yes. So, obviously, Gion has followed in their footsteps. She doesn't use any uh, additives. Yeah, um, no enzymes, non-filtered, yeah. uh, you know, very wild, very hands up winemaking. Wild ferment, all that sort of yeah. stuff. Yeah, sulfur, so, bottling. The kind of stuff we like. Yeah, certainly the Shannons that I like to drink. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, never had a chance to try this producer. Pretty excited. Yeah, let's have a look. I'm, I'm super excited. I've never even heard of one of those, so yeah. that shows my ignorance. We got very little of these wines. Um, well, we thought given... I mean, it's a new producer... Basically, no one knows anything about them, it'd be good to try. Exactly, and it's a new producer for us. It's uh, here in the shop, but also in, in the country, as Pete said, that they have not been imported before. So, um, yeah, perfect wine to kind of open up and have a look at and see what it's that all color. about. Yeah, I mean, like, let's, let's talk about the colour for a second. I'm sure, I don't know if you guys can see that there. I'll hold it closer. And continuing um, on with the decanter theme. Oh, yeah. Please decant. Yeah, it's especially with Shannons and natural Shannons. Or, I mean, Shannons in general, they need time, they need air. Mm. Um, typically, especially with this color, it has been exposed to oxygen during the winemaking, but that usually means that it wants a little more oxygen when you go to drink it. It's a friend. Um, it's a friend of oxygen. Yes. As are humans, friends of oxygen. Most of um, them. <laughs> so, um, wow, it is pretty. It's, it smells like um, there's a kind of baked apple note. There's a lot of spice to it. Like, yeah, this is um, on the rich side of Shannon's. Yeah. From what I can smell, it may not be in the palate. But... Yeah, it smells quite uh, quite rich and ripe, but but sort of still balanced. It's not, you know, sometimes you smell wines that are like overripe and they've got that sort of like stewed yeah, quality. Yeah, it's, not it's definitely that. not that. It's just, yeah, baked apple pie kind of thing. Yeah, it's like you're in the process of baking the apples. It's about to go in the oven kind of thing. Like everything's laid out for you. Um, oh, there's honey. pulled the cork maybe two hours ago. Been in the decanter for maybe fifteen minutes. Mm. Um, so you know, definitely do with some more air. Yeah, yeah, so honey, almost honeycomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, 
It smells really good. Mm. Oh, wow. That volume, man. So much palate weight. Oh. It's got breadth. It's got weight. Oh. But, but still balanced with this beautiful wow. acidity. Oh. Still going. Um, it's almost... It's almost off dry. Like there's I don't know definitely if, fruit weight. Yeah, ripeness. I don't know if there's any residual in this. Um, but it's got that riper fruit yeah. character. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's in spades. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, it's weighty, it's textural. Um, it's a, it's an incredible wine. That's that is something really really saline special. finish though, like yeah. a really long finish, like pretty impressive that. This is a new wine for them. Mm. Um, and coming off younger vines as well. Yeah, and for someone that reads, like, is relatively new to winemaking as well. You often okay. don't see that level of complexity in younger vine wines. Like, you know, you love the wash in so yeah. much. There's just so much that they offer. Yeah. I mean, you've definitely got to be in that style of wine. Like, Riesling Freaks, sorry. Yeah, this same, is not your style. Although, good. like, to be fair, some might like it. Sure. I mean, if they want to dip their toe into a different pool, it's very different to, to that style. Be my yeah. guest and leave some for me, but <laughs> baby, this is oh, it's so good. Cool, yeah, definitely. People say don't meet your idols, but with wine, meet your idols. Yeah, Drink their wines, enjoy them. Jeez, man, that's fantastic. Yeah, um, I'm really, I'm really impressed, and not as expensive as. Bernardo or Angeli or any of those guys. Pretty like, close. It's ninety one bucks a bottle. But that's not awesome. like he's like probably early hundreds. Um, yeah, and, and, and Jelly stuff's like early hundreds as well, isn't it? Laloon's like, yeah, early hundreds. Um, and then they go, you know, quite up to the single yeah. stuff. And I'm sure the the high end stuff from Yeah, the the more top tier stuff from this producer's gonna mm. make its way up there as well. But the power, concentration, depth. They're incredibly low yielding vines, which is what drives that volume and depth. Mm. Um, so I, know, I guess that's part of where the price is derived from because they don't have a lot of fruit to work with, but what fruit they do have is yep. very detailed and powerful. Yeah, that's they're really good. That's um, I'm yeah, I'm blown away by the the, the level of complexity and and palate weight in this. Yeah. It's but without being broad or flabby, it's mm. It's still precise, detailed. Hmm. Um, it's yeah. beautifully framed and powerful. Yeah, yeah. That's well a done. really special wine. Hmm. Um, so, welcome to Australia. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming, Bonazo. We hope to see some more of you. Yeah, short and sharp. That's it. All right. Uh, check it out online and in store uh, if you're interested in this sort of style of wine. Um, we certainly are. We think that you should be as well. Mm. Um, we will be back same time same place uh, next week for another episode another thrilling episode of Is It Called Wine Time let's go and we hope to see you there uh, until then stay safe drink great great wine and we'll see you bye, bye.